Hi, my name is Josh Meter, and I've been a lifelong entrepreneur. Over the last 30 years, I've created numerous businesses, including some corporations that reached $85 million in sales in less than two years. But over the last 15 years, my focus has been on helping small business owners and entrepreneurs get their businesses launched, launched successfully, and launched in alignment with their personal values. Uh, this approach is conscious business consulting. Make sure that we're taking in not only what you need to do with your business, but also what fuels your spirit and really provides the why in your existence. So again, I hope you'll enjoy, but more specifically, I hope you will take away some really good information here tonight. This has been consolidated and drafted. This has been gained over decades of working with small business owners. A lot of these mistakes are very common and they're very easy to avoid if you just know what to look for. And we're going to give you the foundational pieces that really will help ensure your success of a business. And that's my passion. And that's why I'm here tonight. And the other half of the Great Things team is here with me tonight. And I'm excited to introduce you here to Kimberly. Thanks, Josh. So that you get to know me just a little bit better, I'm a former award-winning educator and teacher leader turned entrepreneur, copywriter, and coach. When I made the switch from teaching to freelance writer, I went through a lot of trials and tribulations to find the right business model and the right offer. It took me about five years to grow a profitable business. So I've been exactly where you are right now now. And I can tell you, you can do this. I help small businesses discover their authentic marketing voices to write content that helps them grow their businesses and helps them make a big impact. All right. So let's dive into this. Here are some of the things that we have seen time and time again, new business owners and entrepreneurs make mistakes. Now they're not wrong, but they're usually out of sync with the process of where it should be. And that can end up costing you a lot of time, money, and resources down the road. So follow along with me. How many of you here have st already started the journey towards creating a business? And one of the first things that you looked at creating was your business name. Like spent a lot of time on it, thinking all the different options, right? Or maybe you spent a lot of time, have spent a lot of time creating the logos in your branding. That's that's a big thing that people jump into. Uh, the other thing uh, could be how about you started developing a website. We see a lot of people throwing a website up with one of the website builders, like a Squarespace or 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 a Wix or any of those, um, or even starting social media channels and pushing it out there. Right. So these are not bad things, and in some cases they can work. But one of the things that we'll see is that is in the path from starting a business to having it open is about in the middle. And there's some really, really fundamental steps that we need to come to back here to make sure that you've set up for success. Yeah. So in the rest of this webinar, we're gonna teach you exactly what you need to do before you decide on a logo, a brand name, begin a website or open any of those social media channels. So you don't make the same mistakes I did and build an offer nobody wants to buy. So yeah, Josh, you're absolutely right. Understanding some core values and principles at the very beginning of your business is the, one of the most important things you can do to build a profitable business. And what's really great about this strategy is that you build a business that makes decisions for you. And I love this so much. By defining three core things, your business actually makes decisions for you on your path to success. The first is vision. This is the world or the future you want your business to create. Second is mission. This is how on a day-to-day -day, your business helps that vision come true. The day-to-day -day workings, the products that you sell, the customers that you serve. And at the bottom of this pyramid is values and it supports the mission and the vision. It guides how you conduct business, how you interact with your customers and how you make decisions. So this may seem simple or you may not get the depth of benefit that this could bring, but this is the guiding document of where you're going. Because when you're starting out a business, you are the most clear on where you want it to go. These things can be amended, but they really are your guiding principles. 
uh, by creating the right values. As you grow and you bring in employees, this will help define how your employees work within the company. It also shares with vendors that you may, or partners that you may partner with, and they can see like attracts like. So if you have um, a value of environmental stewardship, you are going to invite people, partners and brands in that also support that. If you have something that may be of a political nature, it will bring people out in. The other thing it will do is it may keep the wrong customers out, which is as important as getting the right customers in because the wrong customers can be tremendously difficult. The other part is when you're starting your business, this is the place where you have the most questions. As you go, it gets narrowed down. You start to get your processes in place. You start to get your operations and everything becomes streamlined. But in the beginning, it's wide open. So how do you maintain that truth to yourself and to your business? And this is the vision, mission, and values. So with that, how does that impact you? Can you see, or even better, can you feel what's important to you? If you can feel it, can you get it on paper so someone who's never known you or doesn't know your existence in a glance can understand what you're about, how you're doing it, and why you're doing it, what you're trying to create in the world. And these may be grand or they may be very, very specific. And it's okay because it's yours. If you want to change the world, then change the world, but share how you're going to do it. If you'd like to make housing for low income in a specific part of your city, that's also a very effective mission or vision to have and explain by how you're doing it with your mission and the values of which you uphold it while you're doing the process. So now it's your turn. Your invitation is to get a pen, pencil, and a piece of paper and take some time right now. Identify your vision. What's the impact or change you want to make in the world? the mission and how will your business do that from day to day? And what are your core values? Feel free to pause this video, take five or 10 minutes, no more than 10, and give yourself a first draft of your vision, your mission, and your values. Know that this is a first draft of many drafts to come because as you business, as you build your business, you're going to, going to circle back on your vision, mission, and values and continue to refine them as you build that profitable business. So thank you. One other thing, as, as you're coming back after this first draft and when we're done with this webinar, test it with those that you trust. You know, are, you know, who you're close to, if you have a partner, a business partner, trusted friend, it's really good to hand these uh, statements to them to see if they can feel and see if they can reflect back to you what you intended to to share through these statements. It's a great practice. Now that you have your vision, mission, and value statement, the next step that most people may logically go to is what is their offer. But there is a, actually a step before that. So before you say what you're doing or what you're selling or what you're producing, there is one step before that that we'd like to dive into, and that is the customer discovery. Yeah, Josh, I really love customer discovery. And this is the number one thing that I did not do that led to several failed offers that nobody wanted to buy. And here's why. I developed the offers before I asked my audience what they actually thought they needed to know. And so that's what customer discovery is. It's interviewing and serving your ideal customers. So you likely already have people that you are serving or know that you would like to serve and approaching them, asking questions, interviewing them specifically to get to know where they are right now with the niche, niche that you are in, what their problems are, kind of where their skills are, what their skills gaps are and where they want to be. Because ideally your offer will take them from where they are to where they want to be or where you're able to take them. And again, that includes surveys, interviews, also showing up on, ask, on social media and asking in groups and on your own uh, social media pages. 
as well as doing SEO research. And that's something that I really, really enjoy doing. There are great tools out on the internet that can help us understand the search journey of your ideal customer so you learn exactly what words that they're using, uh, exactly, again, what the problems are, the solutions that they're looking for, so that when you build an offer, it's absolutely, absolutely irresistible and uh, kind of like an of course, yes, I'm going to buy that because it's designed specifically to solve their problems. One of the benefits is actually knowing the language and the motivation. Like, I just want to dive into that a little bit more. One example is we worked with an incredibly talented and, and very, very educated uh, doctor of natural functional medicine and also a real doctor. And she was doing work for uh, women who wanted to prepare their bodies for a healthy pregnancy. And the term was thrown out was preconception health. And that was that was everything that she understood, it made perfect sense. And we actually built around that. But when we did the logic or the research into that term, that term did exactly zero searches for that term. But it was a very big marketplace. It wasn't that it wasn't needed. It was just the wrong language or we were asking the wrong questions. So from that perspective, you know who you're speaking to. You'll understand what their problems are because we are solving problems. Um, and how they need their problem solved. And then also with the an eye towards the SEO aspect so that the search engine also indexes you and exposes you to the right clients. This is foundational. Uh, you're going to do it. If you don't do it up front, you're going to do it long and painfully over a slow sales process. So why not in, do the investment up front, get that clarity, and you will be surprised by the laser focus that your marketing takes and the, the, the compacting of the timeline to success. So that is focusing on customer discovery and SEO research. Now, this is all in building to defining your offer. Now, what is an offer? That could be a product that you're selling. It could be a a service that you engage in. It could be collaboration. It is whatever you do or bringing forward in this world. But if you're like most, especially small businesses who might be their first time out, they will usually throw out a price for what they're doing. And that price is usually way too low because there's an aspect of fear and trepidation. Um, so one, we want to make sure that you're approach, uh, uh, pricing it properly. And how do you determine what the pricing is? There's two or three components to it. Uh, one is, is it marketable and will it be purchased? The second piece is, is it financially sustainable for your cost structure and your, your, in, your entity's uh, financial structure? So you need to be exactly, exactly clear on what your offer is. So we want to help you learn to define your offer. So, Kim, you want to share a couple key aspects of what defining yeah. an offer entails? <laughs> so the most important part of defining your offer is understanding your customer and their problems because businesses solve problems. So you have to go do the customer research first, understand what their problems are, and then you align and you build an offer that solves their big problems their big problem, the skill that you bring, the talent, the wisdom that you bring that can solve that problem and help them move from point A to point B. And so you align for an offer, you align the support mechanisms or the curriculum or the product that again, helps them solve help them solve that problem. And so part of that offer is then really doing the, the financial testing. So look at it, is, is it support, is it, is it scalable? Can you, do you have limitations on scaling up? You know, um, what, how many sales do you need to make it feasible for you? This is, I mean, and I'm also giving you a little hint here of things to come because we're going to talk about the, the, um, the financial component of it. But is the offer one, can it be sold? Is it going to be well valued? And is there enough margin for you to offer it sustainably? So it is an aspect of the numbers. And many people are afraid of numbers at the beginning. It is something that we hear all the time, which, you know, being in business for 30 years, it's it's not in my mindset anymore. 
but it really kind of makes me laugh. I'm like, numbers are actually your friend. Uh, numbers can be fun. Um, they don't have to be scary. And actually not diving into the numbers is where the fear comes from. That is the unknown. You don't know where you're at. By doing an offer that you know is priced appropriately, you've done the customer journey that you know it's needed. It has all the likelihood for success and for conversion in sales. And because I've been exactly where you are, I know how scary numbers, financials, QuickBooks, all of that stuff may feel. I mean, I was an English teacher. But the great thing about getting comfortable with the numbers and the spreadsheets is that it tells a story of your business and it helps guide decisions. So as we've talked, uh, numbers can be intimidating for many, many people, but having a clear offer is the next step in the foundational step into what I found to be the most important and really the key factor of success or not. And it's a financial plan. And if you're unfamiliar with the term pro forma, a pro forma is something that we encourage you to develop. And it is a lightweight, uh, non-accounting based spreadsheet, essentially. And it basically just at a very, very high level will show out the next 12 months of where you think you need to be. And it's a, it's a what if. It's, it's a living document that you adju ad adjust as you go. And here, just follow me step by step through this, because we've had a lot of people start in a program that focused on this, and they came in exactly at the same place with fear and trepidation and the unknown. And by the end of the process, they were loving it. And actually, you know, we had people say, numbers are my friend. And that was one of the greatest, you know, testimonies that we could have had. But when you have your offer, and you may have several, so look at your offers, I say, if you have multiple offers, really narrow it down to the top six um, or 80% of your revenue because you can't account for everything. This is going to be a generalized income and expense. And really what the importance of a pro forma is, is cash flow. Cash flow is one of the biggest challenges to new businesses. Um, it'll kill more in the first year than anything else. So you need to understand if there's going to be peaks in revenues or if there's going to be peaks in expenses where your, your numbers go down. And I'll share the story of how Proformas helped me. When I started that uh, business of that I spoke about earlier, that, the rehabbing the historical building, I knew I was going to lose money. Uh, building, uh, doing large capital improvements is a very costly venture. And I knew that I had to get rent in. So by knowing that, I went in and I I just said, hey, month one, I've got this expense, this expense, I got this expense, and I've got no revenue. Month two, if I can get this, this, and this. And I laid that out over 12 months and I put like one tenant getting in here and maybe one tenant here. And I started seeing this. And the way it worked out for me is I knew for the first three and a half months I was losing money. And at the end of each month, when I lost the amount of money I had planned or lost less, it was a win. And that provided a peace of mind knowing that I was on the right path. I didn't have to wait one full year to see my tax return to know if I made money. I knew month by month where I was. And when you have a good performer like that, you can make micro adjustments. So you can see things coming. And if expenses have increased or revenue has has suffered. You, you get a very clear picture where to focus your energy and really where to focus your efforts. Um, and you do this month by month. At the end of month one, you compare your actuals to what you budgeted and you see where the differences are. Then you make the adjustments for the following month. This is not a static document. You will be in it multiple times a month and we will help show you how to do this. There's You can do it on a spreadsheet, you can do it on paper, but you just keep adjusting and you'll never have that sense of unknown or the sense of dread that the other shoe is going to drop. And that, more than anything in business, I think is worth its weight in gold. Yeah, Josh, thanks so much for sharing about the Performa. I love using it. I love how simple it is. And I love how it creates a simple goal setting as well from month to month to let me know how many new clients I need to bring in in order to meet my financial goals and keep my keep that cash flow going. Um, the other thing I really love about the pro forma is you're all here today because you want to be conscious, conscious, intentional business leaders. And 
You can't do that if you're avoiding the financials. And so this gives you, along with the vision, the mission, the values, the customer discovery, the intentional creation of your offer, this also gives you a clear path forward to that con conscious business leadership. And that brings us finally to the last place is leadership in mindset. You know, you can talk about all the planning and all the tools that they have available, but at the end of the day, you're starting a business, you are where it stops, ends, and everything in the middle. Uh, you know, if you're in business, you're probably wearing multiple hats. You may be doing the bookkeeping, you may be doing the website, and you may be sweeping the floors at night. Uh, but whatever it is, you need to show up every day in the best form that you can, especially if you're in a place where there are employees or other staff members, because your energy and your view, your vision, your mission and values will permeate down the entity or down your company. So let's talk about some of the mindset things. Um, starting a business can be exhilarating. It can be exhilarating for the good and it can be exhilarating for the fearful. And knowing that, there are tools to build that uh, resiliency into it, but you're going to have good days and you're going to have bad days. Um, part of the mindset and leadership is developing yourself a supportive community so you're not on an island. You talk to almost any business owner, they feel like they're the only one out there going through this. But I can tell you for the 80 million small businesses in this country, everyone feels the same thing. Most people are dealing with the same issues. So establishing the right um, right network and community is, is invaluable. Um, also partnering with the right professionals. You are not going to know how to do everything. If you think you are, or you want to learn everything and be perfect at it all, you are going to burn yourself out. Do not do it. Get in the mindset of networking and, and collaboration. That will be professional advisors or attorneys, accountants, bookkeepers, all of it. Um, there's also other people out there. Build your mastermind group. So there's a lot of tools that you can build for yourself to support. And you need to have that, that commitment to your success so you understand your motivation. You need to have, have care for yourself. There's an aspect of self-care in starting a business because if you burn out, no one's stepping up behind you. Being in the spot that you're in right now, thinking about starting a business, you likely are questioning whether you have the grit, the resilience, the fortitude to be your own boss. And I can tell you, you definitely can do this. And it's all about having a growth mindset and being committed to moving your business forward at least 1% every day. If you can commit to that, then you can be a successful, profitable business owner. It's all about growth mindset. I think that's the most important thing, Josh. It really is. So thank you for sticking with us through this presentation. I hope it's given you some ideas and some directions. And I truly, truly hope that you start with that vision, mission, and values and work your way down. Josh and I have a special offer for everyone here who would like help taking these five critical first steps to building their profitable business. It's called the Great Things Accelerator. We help you with everything you need to start your business so that you can let go of the fear and the overwhelm and start on your journey to financial independence and personal freedom by growing your own business. As part of the Great Things Accelerator, we offer live weekly calls we will have a, you have a community group where you can share and bounce ideas off each other and really gain that community sense of community and support that you're not out on an island. There are a bunch of online self-study courses and our main course will walk you through these five critical pieces of the vision, mission, and values, how to develop those, the customer discovery process, how you can define your offer, do the sales testing and create your first financial pro forma. It is a lot simpler than you would expect and we'll get you up and running very, very quickly. And finally, with the mindset and the leadership skills, we, we sprinkle those in and there are several courses regarding how to develop that with yourself. So act today. We'll have the offer and the link in the description here. So if you have any questions or any interest, please reach out. The Great Things Accelerator will be opening for a limited enrollment very soon. Uh, we are only doing open enrollments a few times during the year. The cost for the 
membership is $177 a month, and it is an extremely good value for all that you get. We invite you into our community of like-minded business owners out to make a big impact. So thank you for your time. We hope to see you in the accelerator soon and best wishes for all you're creating. Go out there and do good in the world. I can't wait to help you build your business. Mm -hmm.